Pro. Hmm. Hey, what's up? Hi there. My favorite fan. The best fan, the GOAT, the OG. My only fan. Hi there. Everybody's just joining. We're just gonna start painting right now. Just looking for some brush brushes right now. Hey, how's it going? Everybody that just joined, we're just gonna start painting right now. Just looking for some brushes. I think we got three good ones so far in this kit and a bunch of these. All right. How's everybody's day going? So I think we got some three good brushes here out of all of these. <laughs> hey there, how's it going? Just about to get started on painting. How's everybody's day going? Hmm, I'm not sure what color I want him to look yet, but I know I don't want, I want him to look different than the, this one. Thinking maybe a lighter blue. Oh yeah? Well, that's good, I'm glad to hear that. Everybody happy that it's Friday at least? <laughs> this is a, a platypus bodyguard that I got off of Etsy for a D&D. &D. He actually comes with a smaller model too that he protects like a little traitor. But I have to find him. So right now, what I'm doing is uh, I already painted a, a good base on him. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some different colors on there, some uh, brighter blues to kind of bring out what the different layers of his fur. Just not sure where I wanna do it yet though. Cause like, if you look at the other one that I did, I made him brighter on these areas, you know, but I want them, they're twin brothers in my little story, but I want them to be different, you know? Twins, but not like perfect twins, like more like fraternal twins. I think I'm thinking brighter legs, maybe. Yeah, we'll do a layer of this, of this Barreth blue on this, on this leg. Anybody else in here paint models or paint anything, really? Oh, I, I got them off of Etsy. You know, uh, Etsy, the uh, online store app, somebody 3D printed it for me. Etsy has some of the coolest models I've ever seen. Uh, let me see if I can find, I probably have another one right here. For any Star Wars Legion fans, I also have this, like, this is a 3D printed uh, Twi'lek Rider that I use in, in Star Wars Legion. Uh, proxy for Tauntauns. Yeah, they're really cool. Pretty good price, too. I think, like, the guy who sells these specifically, they're, like, four bucks for each model, which isn't too bad, considering how expensive normal models are when they get packs of five.
So Jake Schaefer, what uh, what kind of models do you paint? Can you see the little merchant? Uh, sure, yeah. I'd have to give me a quick second and see if I can find it. Here, if you guys want to know what I'm looking through, I have a giant bin with googly eyes that is just full of models that I have not painted. <laughs> and he's probably in here somewhere. There he is. This is the little merchant that goes with these guys. You guys are showing, I'm just showing off some uh, of my D&D models here. This 3D printed set of platypuses with the two bodyguards and the little tiny merchant that they protect. Which honestly, I might paint him next too. Not today probably, but I'll probably paint the merchant too because it looks like he's got a lot of little, like, he's got a cool little outfit, you know, and you could probably paint a lot of nice little different colors on him. He's even got a tiny platypus on his stomach most games workshop level two models I use for D&D. Really? Oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. The Lord of the Rings models would work pretty well to be used for like bards and stuff, so. Even even paladins. Do you regularly uh, play D&D? Yeah, he's pretty cool. I haven't given him a name yet, but I named the twins. This is uh, Bongo and this is gonna be Mongo. I used to play D&D a lot, so I had, I had a campaign running that we were planning on using these guys for. Okay, cool, man. Cool. For wondering what we're, for what I'm doing right now, I'm just adding like thin layers of this uh, Baroth blue because I don't want it to look so similar as far as the, the blue shading to this one. Although I did paint this guy with a thousand suns and I did paint this one with, um, I believe I used McCrag blue instead as a base. But yeah, I want him to have kind of a different tone of blue for his coat with a little bit more of lighter tones as well the high, the, on, the, on the part of the tummy and the legs and stuff. Might have gotten this a little too watery. Yeah, man. For sure. And you say you play D&D pretty regularly. Are you like in the middle of a campaign right now with some people? Hey there, everybody that's joining. Uh, just letting you know, still here painting. It's platypus bodyguards, 3D printed models, and just hanging out. Yeah, welcome, guys. Well, everybody who's joining, welcome. We're just here. Painting some 3D printed models for D&D and just chatting it up. What's going on? Wow. You're DMing three campaigns and you're playing in two. That must be a lot of lore, man. You have to remember for those three campaigns. You have a lot of uh, players in your current campaigns?
and I can't even imagine having to remember each of their backstories. Oof, be a lot. It was just enough to make to make our our backstories for our campaign. Oh, welcome, the real Dookie. What's going on, man? <laughs> We're just here painting some three D printed models for D and D. That's smart. I should give my DM tips from yours. Yeah, now this was our first campaign that kind of fell through, but it was going pretty well until one of our uh, one of our mages dropped out just randomly, and then our paladin dropped out too. So then we just ended up being me and the uh, other elven mage that was there. It wasn't a good time. <laughs> we could not. We could not win these fights. I'm starting to kind of get a picture of what I want out of this. You know, I don't really come to my models with like a paint scheme or whatever, unless I'm doing like a Warhammer uh, army, because like this kind of stuff's really easy. You just, you know, paint the army. What you paint? I'm painting um, some 3D printed models for D&D. This is a uh, platypus bodyguard set that comes with a little platypus trader. So right now we're just painting one of the other brothers because I, I finished one and I'm doing the other guy now, but I was trying to make him different than this one in terms of how the color uh, colors came out on his uh, fur. I want him to be a lighter tone. As I was saying, I think most of the time when I'm painting, I just kind of wing it pretty much, you know? And if it comes out nice, it comes out nice. And if not, they have that stuff that strips paint, so I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I know. I really wish that they had come with like a tiny little hat and I could, you know, they could be Perry the Platypus. You know, honestly, the guy I bought these from probably 3D prints those things too. You could probably 3D print me a tiny hat. Man, look at how, look at the guns on this guy. This right here, this is the kind of muscles you get from creatine. <laughs> Man, the only thing about using this Thousand Sun Blue on this McCrag Blue is I don't know if you guys can really see that. I guess in like certain light you can see that it's coming up, but it's kind of dark. Hmm. Oh yeah, they're way bigger than the Space Marines. I think I have a Primaris Marine here for comparison too. Oh, this guy's tiny compared to him. This guy looks like he could literally like hammer curl heavy bolters. this I just need a little thin layer <laughs> I 
Yeah, nice. So it can still kind of come through just a little bit. And that's what I was hoping for was uh, I wanted this blue to kind of push through on the legs just a little bit more than this because this is such a dark blue. And it is kind of coming through. It's giving it a cool look. I like it so far. I got any other uh, hobby painters in here? Oh man, I have no idea. <laughs> That's a good question. Honestly, lately my my actual playing, when in terms of D and D and even Warhammer, has been kind of uh, kind of low. But I don't know. I'll come up with something. I was thinking like if you were, if, I'm not, I've never DM'd D and D before, but like if I was gonna put them in a campaign. I would do something where like they're they're just like random uh traders that come by after like really hard missions kind of like how when you're in like a game or whatever and or like in resident evil and resident evil that dude with the the cloak would come by and just sell you really cool stuff i was thinking they'd, they'd be like that they would just show up randomly you have no idea how they get there they're platypuses they're super weird <laughs> you can tell they're not from the land that you're in because they obviously have like some chinese aesthetic and stuff and then they just come and they sell like special cursed items or like special healing items and stuff from from their world you know and then they just disappear just like that real mysterious like like perry the platypus too <laughs> okay i'm like i'm digging where this is looking so far now let's do some on the tummy Do you also play D&D, uh, Onman? What's going on, guys? Never played, I've just painted so far. Yeah, I think that tends to be for a lot of people. If you really want to try to get into a little bit of D and D stuff, I know there's like a an online community for D and D too on the this one game called Tabletop Simulator. I don't know if you know about that, but yeah, a lot of people play a lot of board games, even Warhammer on there. Um, a lot of hobby shops closed down during COVID, so a bunch of people got on there, and a lot of people learned how to play the games through there actually. That's how I was playing D&D at least for a while. But there's nothing like rolling real dice. I'm actually pretty sad because I, I have D&D dice. And I bought this set specifically to use it. And I've literally never gotten a chance to use it in real life. But like these are like full metal cast dice. And I was really excited when I saw them in the store. And I'm just so sad. <laughs> I never got to use them really in a real game yet. I did get to use the 20 side, But... Not not in, in IRL, just mostly online. Okay, so now that I've done that, I kind of want to see what other kind of blue I can throw on there as far as different shading. Which for that one, I think I'm probably going to use Caldor Sky. This is a good, all right, whoops. This is a good blue that is a brighter color than the regular one, that the base coat that we have, which is the McCrag blue. It's, it's not super bright, it's just a little bit brighter. I have a lot of McCrag blues though, and a lot of Caldor skies. I have a lot of ultramarines. What's going on, man? We're here painting some uh, platypus bodyguards for D&D. &D. This is uh, Bongo and his brother Mongo. Okay, we want to try to get a, a brighter blue on top of his chest. 
And probably as we go up too, we'll probably want to add some brighter blues going up. Man, these platypus guards are just literally all arms, but like no chest. <laughs> <clears throat> hmm, I'm not sure if this is giving me enough of a color that I want. Okay, let's try something else. Let's throw around some more Barith blue and see what happens. Yeah, you definitely probably would like trying to do tabletop simulator if you have a computer, man. You could probably play with people from all over the world with, with that thing, with that game. Uh, I would definitely, man. I don't know if you have a hobby shop in your area. It really, It's really hard when you don't have like a, a local hobby shop, but you could always be the person that starts D&D &D in your area too. going on guys how's everybody doing how's everybody's friday going so far oh, we might have a little bit too much there on the brush actually hold on i'm trying to get a straight line here there we go Yeah, man. I mean, hey, if you have friends and maybe they're not into D&D, &D, you could probably definitely bribe them with pizza, beer, and wings. And then just tell them, hey, we're going to meet up. I'm going to ask you guys, what would you do if this happens? And uh, take it from there. You know, hit them with a starter, with a starter quest and see if they get into it. I think people really tend to think that like oh D&D is not for me you know I'm not really into that kind of stuff but then I mean you sit around with your friends anyway all the time and ask them hey man what would you do if this happened which is actually a lot of what D&D is you just end up walking around places and go and then this happens <laughs> Now, as you guys can tell, I'm clearly having a little bit of spillage in areas that I don't want. But what I'll do later is come back and clean that up. Anything you mess up, you can always come back and just clean it back up. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate the follow, guys. If you guys like this, just make sure you guys keep a watch out. I am going to be trying to post some more stuff on my YouTube channel also. Um, I'm going to be doing a review of the first Imperium box set. I have been getting all the Imperium subscriptions for Warhammer. Uh, I'll go over the first binder pretty much. Uh, I've been painting for... I guess you could say three years. I really got into the hobby because someone who I really like bought me my first starter kit for Warhammer and encouraged me to get into it. And before that, I don't think I could ever paint even a little bit. But, I mean, I've just tried to do the best I can when I paint, you know? I don't know how to do anything like like actual painting, which I've seen some stuff on YouTube that I'm like, you're just like, geez, that's amazing. But 
I don't know. I like my, the way my models come out, and then each one feels unique, you know? You do something unique on your model, you know, you know that you did something cool, and it's like, it's cool for you. So like, I have one of these models right here. I'll show you this guy. Like, this guy is one of my favorite first models that I made. Um, and this is when I was messing around with an actual paint that is a uh, water-based texture. And so like, for me, as the artist, I know that like, I came in here, and I don't know if you guys can tell, but those little three lines, I did that, it's so small. I did those three random lines with like this cut with Barrett Blue. And I don't know, to me it looked cool as hell. And then it just it just stayed with me. I was like, yeah, that's kind of the gravity pushing against the water. And I think that's the really cool thing. And I used real dirt to make this base. I just stuck it in some mud with some glue. But it's stuff like that that just it stays with you. And you're like, hey, I did this cool little thing and it looked cool. And I didn't know I could do that. But yeah, yeah, in, sh in short answer, man, sorry, <laughs> that was a lot. But in short answer, yeah, I've been painting for like three years. On and off again, though. You know, I gotta, you gotta find the time. Ooh, that's too much. And thank you, by the way. Wow, I did not know what song was playing right now, but I'm not really vibing with this song. I guess, why not? Yeah, man, and then, uh, hey, if you ever want to duet me on any of my videos, man, show off some of your stuff, please do. <clears throat> I probably could, but I don't... Yeah, well, I, st I still don't want to get in trouble for anything. How are you going to give me advice like that and then go, I think, at the very end? <laughs> I need 100% certainty before I risk my barely budding channel. Man, I have no idea why, but I really like the way this back came out. <laughs> like an anime character it's like he's charging up you're requesting coldplay uh i don't know if i could find like a parody of coldplay yeah sure All right, we're gonna do a little bit of the light blue on the neck here and then we're gonna come over and pass it again with that barith blue afterwards and we're gonna get some of the, the face features here too I wonder how you would give him, like, a unique little beard. <laughs> He's a platypus, right? How would he have a beard? But I wonder how I could do it. Maybe a little extra blue on the bottom, so the fur shows. Just like that. Oh, I wish. Yeah, you know, that's something I need to get into also. All I have is uh, liquid green stuff. And I just recently used it on, on actually the, the custom model that I made here, this guy. I'm going to take a look at that. I don't know if you can tell where I use green stuff. It's like right, right in the chest plate right there. Sorry, let me get it into focus for you guys. Yeah, and it, it's not, you know, liquid green stuff's kind of hard to use, but regular green stuff's better. I've kind of found it easier to just melt plastic in certain places. I don't know if you can tell, like I extended his leg right here with some melted plastic that I just heated up in there. But yeah, man, I would love to get better with green stuff. That'd be good. That's my next goal as a hobbyist. So my, I've learned one thing about myself. My, my 
approach to painting is always make a mess but get all the colors where I want and then come back in and just like clean it all up. Oh, okay, well thanks, I appreciate the tip. And then I definitely won't play regular music. But you know, I will say it's kind of funny. I can't play regular music, but people can stream all of like the Buzz Lightyear movie on, on live. Oh boy, we got a little bit too much blue on the back there. So we want thin lines, we don't want to do these thick lines. And I keep messing it up because I keep turning the brush the wrong way. Oh well, like I said, we can come back and just clean it all up. Pelt, it turned out okay. You may, oh wow. You know, that's actually something I really want to do is make uh, like custom pelts and stuff too. So you're an orc player also. That is pretty cool. I wanted to get into orcs, but I ended up getting into um, Chaos Space Marines and then 30k instead and then Imperial Guard. <laughs> but I, I, orcs are just so I feel like you can do so much with orcs. You can go you can just make some of the craziest and coolest looking models. I just want to do like a little light fur belly around his belly button. We got a little too much in there. Nope, still covering the belly button. I might need to get a dry brush and poke it. You know, I was supposed to get um, some actual, some orc models in the next Imperium box set. So hopefully if I get some, I can probably do some cool stuff with that too. Man, I think I covered his belly button up. Hmm. Well, I guess so. Might need to get out the, uh, the X-Acto knife for this. For Nurgle out of like glue and just some random spruces and some, some bits that I had. And I felt like it had to be gross, right? But I didn't want to go overboard with it and make it look so gross that it was like, you couldn't even tell what any of the details are. If you look on the back, you can tell it is spruce. <laughs> All right, let's see. You know, so I'll, let me see, I've got another one here. This is the first and only Death Guard model I've painted. And again, I had to feel like I had to keep it somewhat, not too, Chaotic. Hmm. I think it came out okay, but you know, now the more I look at it, the more I'm like, what could I have done differently, you know? What's going on, guys? Okay, let's get back to it. All right, so we made enough of a mess of this guy. Now we got to do a little bit of cleanup to pick up some of these details to get him back out. I'm going to take my Thousand Suns Blue and I'm going to start coding up some of the areas that I may have gone a little overboard. What's going on, Luna, Luna Cowboy Baby? How you doing? You having a good Friday so far? Definitely gonna need a couple coats of this stuff to cover up exactly and get that nice blend look I'm going for. Thanks, man. 
Yeah, plus I, I want to do justice to my models, you know? As far as if I was going to get into orcs, I want to make sure I, I do the best that I can to paint them to look as terrifying and menacing as they really are. Let's see, let's see. We're gonna, we're gonna have to do a couple shades of this over and over again. In the areas that I don't want to show so, that I want to be just a little bit lighter. Okay, now I think, just maybe, when I have it this color, when I have it the Thousand Sun Blue, if I put Kaldor Sky over it, it should show better than just putting it on the McCrag. I just have to be very selective where I want to put the Caldor Sky over the Thousand Suns Blue. I definitely want them to have lighter boobs. <laughs> Mostly because when you think about when natural light hits, you know, obviously the top part of the model would be brighter than the lower part of the model. That's like the only painting trick that I learned from a YouTube video that I watched like six times. I think that's okay. Yeah, I, didn't, I actually didn't want to cover that, but it's okay. I felt like it was too there was too much brightness on this right shoulder. I definitely feel like it's getting like a weird blend when you cover the Barrett blue with a thousand suns. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm okay with it. I'm not sure how this guy's gonna turn out yet. Sometimes all my ideas don't work out <laughs> and you gotta come back again and, and just start all over from scratch. Hmm. You know, it would look cool tattoos on the belly. You know, that's what I was thinking too, of doing like a red kind of like a, like a red, yeah, red tattoo, like a sp spiral, right? And then like maybe a little triangle. But I don't know, I was also just really transfixed right now. I was like, I was getting in the zone about, um, I'm noticing that when I keep going over like the Barrett blue on the Thousand Suns, it's giving me like this really nice lighter blue that just looks really, interesting to me i don't know it's just it's coming out really cool and i think it's coming out like a unique pattern of fur 
But I'm definitely gonna do the tattoos on the belly probably, for sure. Probably do them in red actually, that'd be cool. Maybe that's what he was missing. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can tell just from the different, because also because the camera won't focus. You see. Oh, oh, almost got it. How do I get this into focus? <laughs> well. I'll keep going, and then hopefully the camera focuses on it and you can tell what I'm doing. What's going on, Anthony? What's going on guys? Everybody that keeps joining, how you doing? Okay, I feel like I'm losing track of what I want to do with this. And for that reason, I'm going to try and take a second and re-strategize my approach here. Hmm. Maybe if I paint the weapon first, then I won't lose track of what I'm trying to do. So for weapons like with metal, which this has a lot of metal, I always do at least one base coat of Mechanicum Gray on there just to get a nice solid metal look of, like, of that deep gray underneath. And then I start adding on texture colors of the glistening uh, metals like Lead Belcher and stuff. Ooh, but on his I might make it bronze because I do have some bronze I've been wanting to use that I got also in my Imperium set. Now, actually, for this thing, I remember that I specifically cut it off right at the end there because of the, the, I made the top part like a wood frame because it's like supposed to be like a bongo drum weapon that they made. So I'm, I'm going to stop it right there, right where it connects to the top. That way I don't have to keep coming back and recolor it again with uh, brown. What's going on, uh, Davor Marad? Davor Marad. Sorry, I butchered your name. What's going on, man? We're just here painting some D&D platypuses right now. Some models from D&D. These are platypus bodyguards. What's going on, Snake3888? How's your Friday treating you guys so far? <laughs> so 
Somebody's name was Simp for Alicia. Good for her. Good for her. She had her very own simp. Got it. Now the harder parts are always getting right into the weapons, right where the body meets. Right there. Oops. Sorry about that. What's going on? Uh, QI hop? No, QI hop. I'm just here painting, painting some D&D models. It's your platypus bodyguards. got the weapon done we just need to wait for that to dry and come back and hit it with some different colors some lighter metals to give it a different different look make it look as shiny as his brothers maybe even shinier who knows okay so now we're going to try the caldor sky again see if we get that brighter look now on a different color kind of looks the same to be honest can't really look can't really see it through the blue which is really disappointing yet to find a use for Kaldor sky Oh boy. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> hey, how you going? How's it going, guys? We're just here painting some D&D models. 
I feel like I can't even get through the hey how's it going guys part. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. What's going on, uh, Gary Baldi? Oh, gone. How's it going, everybody? What's going on, man? Disappeared. How's it going, Ollie? Uh, Mor Mor Moriarty? Oh yeah, cool. We're just here painting some D and D platypuses, guys. What's going on? These are some platypus bodyguards for the D and D game. Once again, gone, like the wind.
What's going on, man? I'm just here painting some D&D models. Which one was the one that I had open though? Definitely this one. Well, the worst thing that happened to me this week was uh, I had to go to work, probably. guys well i've been streaming for about an hour and my little cat is meowing that she misses me and i'm probably gonna go hang out with somebody much cooler than everybody here so i'll catch you guys when we come back to finish on this guy who i've decided to deem uh bongo the water man The stream just proves once again, just because something doesn't look good in the beginning, doesn't mean it's gonna stay that way. You know, things might turn out in the end, pretty good at the end. Bye.